Hi and welcome to another video by Get It Done Home Repairs. Today's project is we're going to be replacing this pedestal sink with a regular vanity and a countertop. All right, so uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our water supply is turned off. And the way we're going to do that is to shut off valves in the back over here and on this side over here. Let me bring a light in there and I'll show you where they are so you see them. This is the shut off valve right here. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here, we're going to shut that valve off before we open up and take off this 5 8 nut right up here. So we're going to shut these first, we'll turn these off as tight as you can. They may be a little stiff, so just be careful. I'll turn them as tight as you can. Now you do have a hot and you have a cold. This, of course, is the hot. Okay, that's off. Now we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Okay, so now they're both closed. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to the top of the sink, turn your water on to make sure that your valves are closed. And they are. There's no water coming out. So now we know our water supply is turned off to the sink itself. Okay, so now our water supply is turned off and we made sure it's off on top. We're going to put a couple of rags down the bottom because even if this valve here is turned off, you're still going to get the water from this line here dripping down onto the floor. So we're going to come in here, we're going to open it up very, very slowly just so that the water can drain out. And just so you know, this one here is a 5 8 Yours may be different size, but it's 5 8 Do not force it and bend the valve itself. So we're going to hold it with one hand. We're going to come in here and we're going to pull it and break it loose a little bit. And now once it's loose, it should come off fairly easy. We're going to let that water come dripping out first. Okay, and then we'll just lift that up like that. So this one is totally disconnected now. Let's do the exact same thing on the other side. Okay, so that's disconnected now as well. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the the waistline right here. Now this waistline, just so you know, this one will drip a little bit. So we do have a bucket here. When that does happen, if we can get it underneath there, if we can't, we'll just have to clean up the mess that it's going to make. And as you can see with here, there's really no way we're going to get this bucket in behind this pedestal. All right, so let's disconnect the trap itself. We have our rags to catch the water. Okay, and now our trap is disconnected as well. dry up the way we're working so we don't have any water damaging anything. Okay, next thing we're going to do is up underneath the bottom. I know it's going to be tough to see, but you see right up in here, you see that bolt right there? This is a, uh, I mean that nut, it looks like it's about a 9 16 nut. We're going to remove that 9 16 nut and one more on the other side, and then this pedestal will be ready to come off of the base itself. All right, so let me take these out, and I'll come right back. Okay, so you can see we have that one nut loosened up right there. We're going to loosen up this one right up here, 
And now we're going to have an assistant hold the sink so that way it doesn't fall out on top of us while we're working. Oh, here's my volunteer right now. She wants to see what I'm doing in here. Okay, back to work. Okay, now before we totally take those uh, those those uh, nine sixteenths bolts off on the bottom, we're going to come up here with a utility knife, and we're going to cut through this corking that's up here because that corking is also holding this pedestal to the wall. All right, so we'll come in here with our utility knife, and we'll just cut along and cut it all off. And then once we have this all cut off, then we'll be ready to remove the pedestal. So. Okay, so now we pulled it away from the wall. As you can see, it had a lot of silicone on there, so you can use your utility knife to cut through it. Of course, we'll come in here and scrape this off. We are going to remove these bolts just so we don't have them sticking through right here. And you can see down on the floor where the pedestal was actually located. We had to cut that with the utility knife as well. But that's it. pedestal is now off. We're going to get rid of it, and then we'll come back in and we'll clean this all up here. And then we'll put the, uh, start to put the new one back together. Okay, well you get the idea. Next we're going to come up here and we're going to do the exact same thing on this wall right here and we'll get that silicone off of there. Okay, now you're probably wondering how are you going to get these out of the wall or how do they even get them into the wall. Now, whether it's in a wall here or it's a rusted bolt that you need to remove out of your automobile or wherever, there's different ways you can do it. One, you can take a pair of big channel lock pliers like this, get on this and try to turn it. But as you can see, it's just not moving. The best way to do it is to take two nuts, which fit onto there, take one and thread it down all the way down like this. Thread it down. Take your second nut, do the exact same thing. Thread it down, all the way down as far as you can here. You want to go about halfway down the bolt that you're trying to extract. Now these are 9 16 Yours may be different sizes, but they're 9 16 Now we're going to take a wrench, put a wrench on here, and put a wrench on here. And we're going to lock these two nuts very tightly against each other, as tight as you can make them, like that. And now once you have them tight, you go to the nut that's in the back right here, put your wrench on that, and take it, and then turn it. And as you can see, it'll come right out. Now whether it's on your house, or on your car, or wherever, that's an easy way of extracting a bolt. All right, let me show you the exact same thing on this one right here. Again, this is how you're going to remove it. You tried to get on here with your vice grips and your channel locks and you're grabbing it and you're turning it and it's not doing anything except stripping this out right here. Before you destroy the threads on there, stop doing that. Get yourself a nut that screws onto this. In this case, it's a 9 16 nut. We're going to screw it down about halfway down, just like this. Okay? We'll take our second nut, screw it over the top, just like this, until the two of them touch each other. Then you're going to grab your one 9 16 wrench, put it on this one, the other 9 16 wrench, put it on this one, and we're going to lock these two nuts together so that they're, they're tight against each other. All right, and once they're tight, you take your wrench and you go on the bolt behind it. If you're extracting it, you would put it on the bolt in the back. If you wanted to screw it in further, then you would take this nut here and you would screw it in further into the wall itself. But in this case, we're extracting it. So what you do is you put it on here like this. 
and we take it a turn and you can see the whole thing is turning coming out just like that now if it was the other way around and you were trying to insert this bolt into the stud or into the automobile you're working on then you would go on this nut right here and you could tighten it in like that and that way you don't damage any of the threads that are on here but that's not the case today we're removing it so we're going to take the butt the nut in the back and we're going to take this and turn it and we're going to rotate it out and that's it that's all there is to removing or extracting a, uh, a bolt that's screwed into the wall now I'm going to show you this look at the threads on here you can see whoever put this in they didn't use my method and they actually damaged the threads right along there you can see where the threads are all chewed up and these nuts wouldn't screw down any further without the assistance of a wrench because somebody destroyed the threads on here so if you use this method you'll never have that problem the threads will always be in perfect condition all right that's it for this job let's go on to the next one so we moved our vanity now into the location where we're going to be mounting it and now let's get in there and let's uh, let's install it okay so now that we have our vanity set in the location where we want it now you're going to notice that i didn't put it against the wall here and there's a reason for that because we want to make sure we clear this window with the drawer when the drawer comes out so that's why you'll see that is not touching up against the wall but it's personal preference where you want to mount it whether you want to mount it against the wall or if you want to leave it out it's entirely up to you all right so now that we have it sitting in here you want to make sure that it's level in the back and also on the side right here if it's not level then you would take shims such as this and you would come down underneath the bottom right here and you would shim it according to uh, according to uh, you know your particular application all right but we don't need to do it here because everything here is exactly where it belongs now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mount this vanity has got to be screwed into the wall and now you can see right here i put marks on here because as you remember we had that big bolt that was through there so we know that there's a stud in the wall right here there's a stud now if you didn't know there was a stud in the wall then you'd have to get something like this it's a stud finder now this is not that I'm endorsing this product this just happens to be the one that I have for myself and you have to run it across the wall and determine where the stud is now here it's going to be difficult to find the stud because you have tile so a stud work a stud detector will not work very good but you could always go up to that part of the wall above where it's just sheetrock up there and you could find out where the stud would be and then you would measure from the corner out and it would tell you where the stud is located but as i said we don't need to worry about that because we know that the stud is located there so what we're going to do is we're going to drill a small hole through here in the wood with a regular wood drill bit and then we're going to use a tile drill to drill through the tile so we could put these screws in through the back here to hold this cabinet to the wall so that we don't have any kind of movement whatsoever all right so now i'm going to come in here i'm going to drill here and i'm going to drill here and then we'll drill the holes behind it with the uh, with a tile drill all right so let's continue with that okay so now we've determined where we're going to put our screw here so we're going to drill a small little pile of hole right through here Next, we're going to put a small pilot hole right through here as well. Okay, so now we drill through the wood itself. Now we need to drill through the tile. And that's when you're going to need a tile bit such as this. All right, so let's put this bit in the drill and we'll continue. So now we took our tile bit and we're going to put it in here. We're going to drill very slowly through the tile so we don't crack it. Okay, we're through. 
through that one. Let's do this one. And now we're through the tile. All right, next we're gonna grab our screw and we'll put the screws through there. Okay, so now we have our shim in the back so that we don't bow the back of this unit out. And we're gonna put our screw through here into the stud. Okay, it does not have to be real tight, just enough to hold it in place because we don't want to we don't want to damage the wood. All right, so let's grab our next screw. And again, we're going to put our shim inside here, just like that. So now our vanity is nice and tight. We didn't over tighten it and bow anything out. Next, we'll take our utility knife. We're going to cut these shims off right here, even with the top. And then uh, we'll lay our countertop back inside. Okay, so now we're ready to install this faucet. This one here, as you know, this is a uh, this is a Kohler faucet. Not that I'm endorsing Kohler, it just happens to be the one that I purchased for this particular job. All right, we laid everything out. We are going to use this plate here because this is for the plate that we're going to use 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 but that's not the case here, so then this is not going to be used at all. These are the pieces to screw it together. Once we put it through the countertop, this we'll come back to in a minute. This and this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take some plumber's putty, and I'm going to tell you, make sure you use a plumber's putty that is stain-free, so that way it doesn't leave any residue underneath where you're working. All right, so this is the one we're going to use. We're going to put some plumber's putty underneath here just so we don't have any water in, you know, getting through and down into the cabinet itself. It does have a seal right here, but they do recommend using plumber's putty, which we are going to do. So we're going to put a very thin bead of putty around in here. We're going to put this onto here like this. It fits on only one way. There's two little tabs underneath here that it's got to fit into. One here and one on the other side. So we just take this, put it in here until you feel a snap in place like that. We're going to put it through the countertop. We're going to take our plate that belongs on here and our lock nut and we're going to screw them up. All right, but uh, let me put some putty on here first and then we'll put it through our countertop. So we took some plumber's putty out and now we're going to take it and we're going to turn it into a thin little ribbon just by rubbing it back and forth in your hands just like this. Now if you have a lot of excess it doesn't matter we'll clean this up later on but we're going to make it really thin like that. Okay and then we'll take it. We're going to shrink it down a little bit. Now you don't need a heck of a lot of this. You just okay, now we have a lot of excess putty on here. We are going to clean a lot of this off when we put it through the opening in the sink itself. But let's turn our sink up on its side and we'll continue putting the faucet in. Okay, so we're just going to lay this in here like this for now. We're not going to push it down yet, just to stick it down a little bit. Next, we're going to take our faucet and we're going to feed the lines through the opening. Okay, and you'll feel it snap in place. Then we're going to push it up just a little bit like this, and we're going to come underneath the back over here. We're going to take our bracket that came with it. Hold it up like that. We'll grab our nut, screw the nut on like that.
and now either you can take an adjustable wrench like this and adjust it to the, till it's tight or you can just grab a 7 16 wrench and tighten it up as well and we're going to tighten it down very little and you can see all the plumber's putty coming out up on here we're going to let this squeeze out and that'll be the excess you want to make sure that this part of the faucet or the plate itself is even and it's not crooked and as you can see it is fairly even so we're just going to clean away the excess now and once we have this excess putty cleaned off then we'll come in and put our push rod in and we'll install our drain okay. next we're going to take our our drain assembly we're going to take off the plastic protective cover that came with it and then that's trash we're going to take out the popper the pop-up drain itself we then unscrew this piece off of here the upper part of the flange and then this we'll put to the side for now now we're going to take a thin bead of plumber's putty and we're going to put it underneath this part right here before we put it through the sink so let's grab some plumber's putty again now remember if you have extra it doesn't really matter because we're going to take it and clean it off later on anyway turn it into a th very thin ribbon and then we'll put it just around like this okay And then we can just snap off the excess and push this down. Okay, just like that. Okay, next we're going to take this and we're going to put this assembly through the bottom of the sink. So that's what we're going to do right now. This is going to go in here like that. And we're going to stand this up first so you can see it this way. We're going to take this and we're going to put this through here so that this rubber seal is centered in that hole right there. All right, and the way we're going to do it is just push it in here like this, hold it. This has to go to the back of the sink because that's where the, the popper, the pop-up is going to go. And then this piece here, we'll put it on here and we'll screw it down as far as you can by hand until it stops okay that's as far as it goes next we'll come over here and we'll take the nut here and we'll just turn this just a little bit and keep turning it and it'll push that rubber seal up against the bottom of the sink itself Now on the other side, you'll see the putty is coming out. So we're just going to clean away that putty here with a, uh, a towel, a paper towel or a screwdriver, whatever you need to get in there and clean that away. And once we clean that away, then we're ready to go back and put our pop-up piece in here. Let's just snug it down one more time here. Okay. All right, so let's... Uh, Let's put in our, our stopper right now. Next, we're going to take our drain piece, put it in through here like this. We're going to come around on this side over here. Now, we made sure that this is nice and tight. We're going to unscrew this just like this. And this piece here, we're going to put, we're going to take this off, of course, like this. This goes over the top. This piece is going to go in here like this, but before we do that, we're going to take our drain and put it in here. And now what we're going to do, let me show you real quick. This piece here, this piece is going to be in there like that, and we're going to put this piece through it just like this. So that way this pushes the drain up and down. All right, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to slide it in. We're going to put this through there until we catch it. Okay, so this goes in here just like that.
and then we're going to test it to make sure that I can feel the drain is moving up and down. You can see. And most importantly, we can't pull it out, so we know it's set correctly. All right. Next, we're going to screw the nut back on here, just like this, and we're going to screw it down like that. Okay. Okay, so it works nice and freely. Next, we're going to take our our piece for the that opens and closes the drain. We're going to slide it on. Now we put our rod through here. We took our plastic piece and put it on the end here. We adjusted this as we needed to open and close the stopper all the way. I decided to put it in here. I'm holding the stopper here with my hand and I'm moving the push rod up and down just to make sure that it travels the whole distance, which it does. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to snug down this bolt right here, nice and tight. Next, we're going to take our lock clip. We're going to put it over the top like this, put it over here, and then just bend this piece down like that. And that you can adjust as needed once you have it in, in the, uh, the cabinet. All right, make sure it goes up and down the way it's supposed to. Okay. Okay, and that's it. Next, we're going to put a bead of silicone around the top right here where our countertop is going to fit onto. You can use clear silicone, you can use white silicone, whatever works for you. I like to use this because this is a mold-resistant caulking doesn't have to be perfect because this is just going to hold your countertop once you apply it. Some people don't put it all the way around. They choose to use a bead on the corner, but that's personal preference. I like to go all the way around it. Okay, next we'll grab our countertop and we're going to lay the countertop in here. And uh, Okay, so we laid the countertop in. We now have the silicone underneath the bottom, which is going to dry, and that's what will hold that sink top from moving at all. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up underneath the bottom, and we're going to install the lines. The countertop then is centered, centered on top of the vanity itself, and now once that silicone dries, it'll be permanently on there and it will not be will not move. Next we're going to come underneath the bottom right here and we're going to connect up the supply lines and then we're going to also connect up the uh, drain itself. All right so uh, let's grab a wrench and we'll connect it up. We're going to take our supply lines and we're going to put them up on top right here. We're going to screw them on. Now remember which one is your hot and which one is your cold. Now we know on this particular application as well as yours, everything on the left side is usually the hot side, and anything on the right side is the cold side. So we're going to screw these on by hand. It's a little difficult doing it with, with just one hand, but we're going to screw this on here. And we know that that's our hot side because this one marked is marked cold. Okay? Next we'll get this up in here, and we're going to then install our other line on here like that. I know it's a little tough to see, but that's how we're going to install that on there. Now these do not need to be real tight. We're just going to screw these on and snug them down because there's a rubber there's a rubber seal inside there. Okay. And that's how they're going to go like that. Next we're going to just position these lines out of the way just like this. And we'll get in here with a wrench and we'll snug these down so that they're nice and tight. Again, you don't want to have this crooked try to hold it is in the center as close to the center as possible, just like that. All right, and then we'll snug this down and these will be all set. Okay, so we have our supply lines connected now. We're going to put our drain or our P-trap in place. We had this pipe go into the wall. We cut off approximately one inch of the pipe that goes into the wall. And the reason we did that is so we can get this to line up straight with this right here. And as you can see, now it lines up nice and straight. 
All right, so we have a new gasket in here. We have a new gasket uh, going to be going up in here, right up in, in here. Okay, and next we're going to come in here with our extension pipe, which also has our new gasket in it. We're going to take this, we're going to rotate it to the side just like that. We'll put this in here, like this. And now we need to get this up inside there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to loosen this up right here. And we're going to get that up underneath here where it belongs. All right, so uh, let's do that and we'll come right back. We're going to screw this down on top of it right here. Bring our gasket down so that way everything lines up nice and smoothly. Nice and tight, nice and tight, tight and tight. Okay, so everything looks like it lines up perfectly. Now this is just me, this is not something that you have to do, but now after I have everything lined up exactly as I like it to be, uh, before I tighten everything up so it's nice and tight and uh, there's no leaks whatsoever, I do come in here with this stuff here, it's called pipe dope. And it's a joint compound. I do put it on here just to make sure that we have no little tiny leaks anyplace. So now that we have everything fit the way it's supposed to, I'm going to disassemble it and I'm going to put a little bit of that uh, that Pro Dope onto the uh, to the to the uh, to the new seals that we put in there. All right, so that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, so now we're ready to turn our water supply lines on just to make sure that nothing is leaking. So we're going to come in here, we're going to turn these on very slowly in case we have a leak. Okay, that one appears to be okay. Let's try the cold. Nice and slowly in case you have any leaks up here. If you do have a leak, you can just tighten it up a little bit. Okay. Okay, they're all the way open. Appears to be no leaks whatsoever. Let's turn it on up top and make sure we're in good shape here. Okay, let's take a look down here. Nice and dry. We still have to wipe off the excess plumber's putty that's on there. And I mean, we also have to wipe off the pipe dope too. The plumber's putty is pretty clean. All right, let's fill up the sink. Pull our stopper up. Okay. Now we're going to check down the bottom here to make sure that we have no leaks. Here we go. And 
And of course, the way you check the leaks, just run your hands around the outside of the, the connections and you can tell. Nice and dry. If these are leaking here, run your hand on there too. Same thing on the cold side. All right, nice and dry. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our hardware back on here and then this job will be done. And then of course we're going to take our knobs that came provided with the unit itself. We're going to take the screw here that they sent us, put it through the back like this, and we're going to screw the knob onto here. Now, I will tell you this, do not rotate the knob to turn it on. You want to go in the back with a Phillips head screwdriver and put it on the screw itself and screw it in that way. Because otherwise when you rotate the knob, you'll damage the door itself. So hold the knob steady and screw the screw in the back just like that until it's nice and tight. Okay, and that's it. We're going to adjust this too because you can see it's touching down the bottom, but we'll get into that in just a minute. Right now we're going to take these door, these poles for the drawers and we're going to put them on now too. So let's do that. Next we're going to put the, uh, the poles on that came provided with it. Now you'll notice that the screws come in different lengths depending on what type of a uh, drawer you have. Depends on what kind of a screw you're going to need. Now the one I need is a little bit longer because this is fairly thick. So I'm going to put that through here, just like that. We're going to put the second one through, just like that. And then before you tighten it up, you're going to catch both screws into the, into the, do, into the drawer pole before you tighten anything up. So we're going to just catch it a couple of threads here, and then we're going to come over, and we're going to do the exact same thing with the other one. And the reason you're going to catch it by a couple of threads at a time is because sometimes it doesn't line up exactly right and if you tighten it down it won't screw in all the way. So make sure you have both of them caught and then once you have both of the draw poles caught you can then tighten it up all the way. And again you got to turn it from inside with a Phillips head and that's it. This draw pull is on. Now we're going to go up and we're going to do the same thing on the rest of these. And then we're going to come back and we're going to adjust that door so it closes properly. Okay, so now that we have everything connected, you can listen here carefully. You can see that right down on the bottom right here, that the door is touching into the bottom part here. And there's a little bit of extra clearance up here as compared to here. Now, you don't want to let this go because if you let it go, it's going to wind up wearing the way to finish down on here on this part here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into the door itself right here up onto the hinges themselves. We're going to adjust the top hinge and then we're going to adjust the bottom hinge. So we're going to go one half a revolution whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise and we'll see how that does. So we're going to go counterclockwise one half revolution. Okay. It's a little better but still not perfect. So now we did one complete revolution, and that's much better. But I'm still not happy with it. So I'm going to go just a little bit more. And that was one and a half revolutions. And now you can see that the line up on top is fairly straight. And down the bottom we have a decent amount of clearance down here as well. And we have no more touching. But that, that's it. That's how you adjust the hinge on it. Okay, so that's it. Our, our cabinet is in. Our countertop is now on. Our faucet is in. Most importantly, we checked underneath the bottom here to make sure that there was no leaks whatsoever in the bottom. I would recommend in a day or so come back and take a look at it because sometimes when you start to use it, it may develop a slight leak and you may have to tighten up these collars on the bottom right here just a little bit more but keep an eye on it and see our hinges are now adjusted on the door itself so it closes perfectly and that's it this job is done we're on to the next one you're probably wondering why there's a gap up on top right up here against the wall and the reason that there's a gap on there is because we needed this drawer to clear 
the windowsill right here. As you can see, it's a very tight squeeze. And had we moved it over another half inch as it should have been, we would wind up hitting into the molding itself here. So that's why we have the, uh, the countertop slightly off the wall and the vanity is not, t not flush up against the wall. As you can see, it's really not that difficult putting a vanity in. The most difficult part of doing this vanity for us is filming it. That's the hardest part of this whole job. This could have been done in probably two hours. We were doing a video. It took us a considerable amount of time additionally to, uh, to, to document everything that we're doing along the way. If you like this video and you'd like to see future videos, please hit the subscribe button down below. When you touch the subscribe button, a bell is going to come up. When you see the bell come up, you can click on it and highlight if you'd like to be notified of future uploads. But that's it. This job is done and we're on to the next one. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. All right, so that's it. As you can see, it's, it's really not that difficult doing the video. The, uh, let's start again. And of course, we'll be putting the, the faucet from this unit into the other new... new uh, start again. Oh, here's my volunteer right now. She wants to see what I'm doing in here. Okay, back to work.